In the past month, Google and Apple have shown us their upcoming versions of their mobile operating systems Android L and iOS 8, respectively. Which is the better update? Which has the cooler features? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is Android L versus iOS 8. Visually, Android got the larger treatment in this update. The UI overhaul for iOS came last year with iOS 7, in which Apple cleaned up the 3D elements, flattened the visuals, and gave the entire interface a more visible hierarchy. iOS 8, on the other hand, looks virtually identical to iOS 7. Not much has changed visually, with the exception of a few minor tweaks, like Notification Center or Spotlight Search. This year, Google introduced a new design language for Android called Material Design. In contrast to recent years where practically all software designs have become monotonously flat and bland, Google took strides to find a middle ground between overdone skeuomorphs and utterly flat UIs. Android L has depth, and almost every tap results in a water-like ripple. It's somewhere between the new Sense 6 or LG's custom UI, both of which we've really enjoyed, and KitKat. One of the biggest visual changes in the upcoming Android release is the notification shade. It's been more closely integrated with the lock screen. Any pending notifications you have will appear on the lock screen and they can be swiped away or double tapped to be opened. Swiping down from the top edge of the display from the lock screen or when there are no notifications, the quick settings panel will appear. This looks a lot like the custom shade from Asus. There is now a brightness slider and quick toggles for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, orientation lock, casting the screen, airplane mode, notifications, and location. There are many minor and major tweaks from top to bottom in this version of Android. The soft navigation buttons, for example, are also different. Triangle for back, circle for home, and square for recent apps. As far as aesthetics go, we like the direction both operating systems are headed. It took us a while to warm up to the pastels of iOS 7, but both OSs are looking better than ever and we can't wait to see the finished products. Many of the most important changes for both operating systems, however, are behind the scenes. This is probably more true for iOS 8, since it arguably needed the update the most. The two big features you'll see in iOS 8 are continuity and extensibility. Continuity is what will make all of your Apple products work together better in the future. You'll be able to start typing a message on your iPad and finish from your iPhone, or start an email on your Mac in the Mail app and finish from the iPad. You'll be able to answer calls from your iPhone on your desktop, or open a document you've been editing on your iPad on your Mac using iCloud Drive. There will be a lot of extended functionality and interoperability between Apple devices once iOS 8 and Yosemite are ready for consumer release. But a much more important feature is what Apple calls extensibility. Or in short, the ability for third-party developers to integrate their applications deeper into iOS. You will soon be able to share pictures to Evernote from within the Photos app, share to your third-party Twitter client from Safari, or open iCloud Drive files in Dropbox, all without ever leaving the app. Third-party keyboards are also on the way alongside Apple's new predictive text keyboard. That means gesture typing on iOS, as well as unusual keyboards like my personal favorite, Minuum. Android has its fair share of behind-the-scenes magic too. One is Project Volta, or a strong focus on better battery life from the same team that brought the vast improvements of Project Butter. In this, you will find a battery saver mode in the battery usage menu, as well as more in-depth information on what's eating your battery. Other battery improvements are present as well. Google also announced Android L will operate entirely on ARC runtime, no more Dalvik, and it comes with 64-bit compatibility. Even more, all the animations and visuals run at 60 frames per second. Like continuity on iOS, Android will work more closely with Chrome OS. You will be able to run Android apps on Chrome OS, and notifications like battery state, text message calls, Google Now, etc. will also sync. In short, Android is running buttery smooth and has a team dedicated to improving battery life, and iOS will soon give third-party developers some control over the user experience. Crazy, right? That isn't all, though. Both Android L and iOS 8 come with a handful of other user-focused features iOS, for instance, takes families into consideration with the family share feature. You will be able to set up family accounts in iTunes, linking various iTunes accounts to one main account so everyone in the family can share purchases from iTunes and the App Store. No longer will families need to buy multiples of the same apps, songs, movies, or books. Spotlight now delivers inline information cards from various sources. Simply begin typing and Spotlight will provide nearby locations, Wikipedia pages, IMDB entries, and other information right from within Spotlight. And so long as your iOS device is charging, you can activate Siri hands-free. Finally, for quick access to your favorite and recent contacts, they will be located above the application previews in the Recent Apps menu. 
Double press the home button and tap a contact icon to interact with that contact. One of the coolest Android L features is personal unlocking. Like Motorola's trusted devices on its 2013 flagships, you will be able to set particular trusted environments, your home Wi-Fi, specific Bluetooth devices, or your Android Wear watch to bypass your device security. For those looking to separate work from play, Google will also incorporate Samsung's Knox security features into all Android devices. Heads up notifications on Android or actionable notifications on iOS are also coming in both updates. Without leaving the app you're in, you will be able to answer specific notifications, flick an SMS banner notification down to quickly reply from within the current app, or dismiss an incoming call on Android without leaving the app. iOS 8 will also cater to fitness and health fanatics with HealthKit. The application doesn't do much now, but will with compatible hardware. The same could be said for Google Fit, a health-focused set of APIs for better health tracking. The more Google and Apple update their mobile operating systems, the more alike they become. Between KitKat and the not-yet-named Android L release, and iOS 7 and iOS 8, Android and iOS are nearly blow for blow. Both look incredible, run better than ever, and are addressing their biggest shortcomings to date. The final releases of both of these updates can't come soon enough. Folks, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this comparison and would like to see more in the future, be sure to help us out by clicking the thumbs up button below and of course subscribing to the channel. Be sure to follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at Pocket Now. I'm Taylor Martin, you can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.